Today's video is going to be all about making homemade strawberry jam. The first thing you need to do is cut and clean your fruit and get it ready. The second thing you do is scrub the tar out of your jars. Then you boil them in water to sterilize. After you've sterilized them, you let them dry upside down. You have to boil your lids too. Um, you sterilize them, boil them, flip them upside down, let them dry, and then you set them up in some sort of tray so that when your jelly is ready, you pour it in here, but it goes into here and it doesn't burn anything else because this jelly is going to be so hot it's going to burn your skin off if it gets on you or anything else. So now that I've done that, I have prepped my sugar. I'm making two batches at once if it fits. Can't find my big pot, so probably only one. But you prep your sugar according to the directions, which for strawberry jam it says seven minutes. I mean seven, <laughs> seven cups of sugar. So I've got seven cups there, seven cups there. I've got strawberries cut up and crushed here. I've got another thing of strawberries in the fridge. And we're gonna get started. If you have kids or dogs like me, the next thing you do is entertain them with whatever it takes so that they don't come in the kitchen and get burned by this scalding jam. All right, now we're gonna get prepped and then we'll be back. Okay, now this recipe for strawberry jam calls for five cups of crushed strawberries and seven cups of sugar. That's for each batch. Now I'm gonna attempt to do two in this pot, but I don't think it's gonna fit, so we will see. I already pre-crushed my strawberries to make this easier. It doesn't have to be the same day. You can do it in advance. If your measurements aren't totally perfect on the jam, I mean on the strawberries, it'll be okay. See, I would do it on one of those. I got my back up right here. Oh, this is heavy. Okay, now that's about right. Now I'm doing my second batch. One, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, I just had it. Five. Okay. Now we're going to turn this on high. We want to get it to a full rolling boil, which means that when I'm stirring it, the bubbles don't go away. I'm going to go ahead and add my pectin. That's for one batch. This is for the second batch. Now to reduce bubbles and foaming in your jam, Southern tradition, and it also says it on the recipe now, is to add a tablespoon of butter for each batch. Now you're supposed to stir this the whole time so that it doesn't burn or stick. Now this is going to take a while, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're almost at that full rolling boil that we were talking about. It actually looks like we're getting there faster than expected. Now I was being a little too ambitious, so I don't know if all this sugar is going to fit, but we have to pray that it will, because if not, I might have strewn all this. Yep, it's getting really hot. Okay, this was for batch number one. We added in with that boil going on. Look at that, I'm not gonna make it. Now, it's smart to wear shoes and long sleeves while you're doing this because it will pop out, and if it pops out, it will burn you badly. You will be scalded. That's why I tried to entertain my son with the iPad out of the kitchen. Okay, here goes sugar number two. Ooh, we're cutting it close. Very close. Okay, this, I have to stir all this sugar in and I have to bring it back to that full rolling boil, which you saw that that means that with stirring, the bubbles don't go away. That's how hot it is. So no matter how much cool air you bring into it, it doesn't go away. So trying to get it back to that with all this sugar getting mixed in. And when I get back to that, I have to keep stirring 
and cook it for 60 seconds with it boiling. Now I'm going to use the timer on my phone when I get to that point to try to time myself. If you go a little over, it's not a problem. I normally go over. Stopwatch. Stopwatch is the best app for that. You just want to start it when it gets there, and then at 60, pull it off. Now, like I said, it will pop. You might get burned. So keep small kids and animals out of the kitchen. And just be ready for it. You see all this foam? That butter is supposed to take this foam away, but obviously it didn't really help on this batch. I mean, it may have. Who knows how bad it could have been. But we still have a lot of foam. So when I pull this off to ladle it into the jars, I'm going to take my ladle or a smaller spoon and try to scrape off all those bubbles and put them in a jar and then I can make a sandwich or eat it if I want let the kids have it today while the rest of the jelly sets. So it's like a little treat. It's a really sweet treat while you're waiting. Now we heat strawberry jelly so fast that I don't have to pressure cook it or do any of that fancy stuff afterwards. All I do is I put it in the jars and I do a fast set southern tradition method where we put the jars upside down for a couple minutes so it gets all the heat on that lid and then we flip it back over and let it sit for a day or two and you'll hear the lids suck themselves down and they'll pop. And you'll know your jelly's ready because you'll be anywhere in the house and you'll hear that pop. But like I said, if, if you want this jelly to last you for 10 years, then you might want to do this cooking, the pressure cooking method where you boil your jars with the jam in them. I'm not doing that. All right, we're still not at that rolling boil yet, but we're getting closer. You can see all the sugars dissolved, and we've only got a few floating strawberries. There's no water in this. This is, this is just crushed strawberries. All I do is I cut them and clean them. I just cut the stem off. I don't even cut the berry itself. That way it crushes better. I put them in a jar, or I mean a, um, a bowl like that, and I take a potato masher, like this, and I crush my strawberries. It takes a little while. It's a little harder, but I like to have more of the whole berry in my jelly. I think it's nice. Um, you know, my mother, she'll put the strawberries in the blender and blend them up so that it's all evenly distributed and it's more like a paste in there. But I don't like how it sets when you do that. I like having the full berries and chunks of berries. It's just whatever your preference is. Every time you make jelly, it'll be a little different. You just wanna make sure you get your measurements on the sugar correct. That's the most important part. Now, if you're a little bit short, on your jelly, like if I'd had four and a half cups instead of five, you can add a little water. It, it, it won't hurt it that bad. It'll still set. And the main important thing is making sure your sugar measurement is right for your pectin ratio. The pectin is the sure gel. You saw me to put two containers of that in there. It's taking longer. It's going to be some good jelly. I can see it in there. It's getting there. Here comes the boil. It's coming. This will boil over quickly and I will get hurt. So I'm going to get this out just in case I need it. Alright, I'm going to set my timer on my stopwatch. Alright, it started. Oh my gosh, it's going to boil over. I should have never attempted doing this in this pot. But I can't find my other pot. Oh yeah, this is gonna be bad. I gotta turn it down. Ah! Stay out. Don't come over here. This is what happens when you move and you lose your big pot. You can't make your jelly. Darn it. You need one of those big crab boil pots, and then this won't happen. And then you're sticking your hand down in a big old pot. But we're still doing it. 
My stove's just gonna stink. Oh man, that steam is hot. I actually got splashed. So far only one burn, guys. Let's keep it that way. All right, I'm at 57 seconds. I'm at 60, I'm turning it off. Okay, we're gonna get it off of this burner as fast as we can. That is hot. Oh, hoo hoo hoo. Oh man, I got a mess. All right, we'll be right back when we ladle them in. Okay, now, remember how I said we were gonna get that foam off of there? Cause you don't want it in your jelly? Well, there is a ton of foam in this batch. You can see over there on the stove where I cooked over. Not so smart of me. I was hoping it would work. I didn't want to have to do two batches separately. It's no fun spending your whole day redoing this. So, but next time I know I need my bigger pot. So this is gonna be a yummy little treat. I mean, it would be fine in your jars. It's not gonna mess up your jelly. I just don't like how it looks. I don't wanna see foam on the side of my jar. It doesn't look very good. But if you're in a hurry, you just leave it in there. Ladle your jam in. The difference between jam and jelly is whole fruit versus juice. Now, this is technically called jam. I just call everything jelly because that's just how I am. But this is jam because it's got the whole strawberries. I didn't boil them down and take the juice out and use the juice to make it. Now you want to do this as fast as possible because this jelly will start setting in my pot or your pot quickly and then you've got a whole pot of jelly that you can't do anything with because it's no good to put in the jars and it's just got to be eaten or frozen like that and that just would be terrible. I can't get all of those bubbles out and my finger is burned. It hurts like tar. Okay, where did my ladle disappear to? Alright, I'm going to take my ladle. And you see, I've got this handy little thing. If you don't have one, that's fine, but you're just gonna have more of a mess in your in your tray. See, that's why I put this tray here too, so that I don't have sticky jam all over my counter. It's the best you can do. Just, I try to prep so I have less stuff to clean up. You see, I've got some of these bubbles, but that's okay. I'm not selling this jelly. This is for me and my family and my friends. So, we want the least mess possible. Now I'm going to fill my jars higher than it says. It says to leave, I think, a half inch in there. I don't know. I'm going to get it pretty close to the top because, like I said, we eat it so fast it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter anyway. They're only telling you that for measurement's sake so that when you buy your jars you know how many you need. But I always have extra jars on hand because I do this all the time. So mine is pretty close. Okay, and then we take it. And it's, this gets hot too. This gets really hot. The metal absorbs the heat. So your fingers are gonna feel the heat. Now we'll come back after these jars are finished. Okay, now that I'm done ladling all the jam, <clears throat> while these are really hot, I still have to clean off the top so that I can put the lids and bands on them because if you don't do it fast they won't set. Now I'm not worried about cleaning the sides off right now. I can clean the sides later. We're just getting the rim. We don't want any jelly on the rim because it'll mess up the seal. Whoo, these are hot. So remember I said but if you eat them fast and you're not worried about it lasting for years, you screw it tight Mommy. and you put it upside down. That's all I'm doing, I'm putting it upside Mommy. down. Mommy. You're gonna get burned, baby, get out of here. I'm making jam. No. Jelly. You want jelly? Oh, okay. See, we call everything jelly. All right, baby, move. All right, now we'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so now I've had these sitting upside down 
for a few minutes. <clears throat> All I did was wipe the rim, put the lid on, flip it upside down. It's hot. It's really hot still. But now that they sat like that for a few minutes, the quick set method, I'm just going to flip them over. And there's still jam on the outside of these. I didn't take the time to wipe them down yet because priority is just getting it to set. You can always clean the jars later. Oh, man, that's hot. Woo! <laughs> now, this jar I never flipped over because it's my Bobo jar. I didn't have enough to fill it up. It's actually an extra. You always need to have an extra jar or two. You never know how the stuff's really going to cook out. So always prep ahead. I'm going to put it in the fridge. So it doesn't matter about flipping it because it's going to be eaten first. Now I'm going to let these cool off like this. And like I said, you'll hear it. This will suck down. It'll pop really loud in the house. <clears throat> when they're cooled down, I'm then going to take my handy dandy rag again. And I'm going to wipe down the jars to get all the jelly off. You want to leave them alone. You don't want to touch them. <clears throat> and you want to let them set. Now that's it for the day. You can see this huge mess I created by trying to do two at once. Not very smart. I know better now. Make sure you keep these guys out of the kitchen. Cheetos? Okay, we'll talk about it. So now we're looking at the jars and it looks like, see how you can see it's sucked down? It's all set. Oh, that one wasn't set. You see, these have all these have all sucked down. So that's how you know they're ready. Now if you have one like that and this one that didn't, I'm going to set them to the side. If it doesn't do it within the next 24 hours, I'm going to refrigerate it and make this my priority. All right. <clears throat>